Today, we're making chicken scarpariello. Now, what we know about the dish is that it comes from the area of Naples in Italy, not Florida. What we don't know is really where that name comes from. So scarpello in Italian is shoemaker. So one could patch or cobble the dish together. And scarpariello means a shoemaker's assistant. So an apprentice could buy all the stuff on a cheap wage. Now, other people you know, tend to get a story that's a bit more flowery. The studs of garlic remind them of the nails on the bottom of shoe. I don't know what's true, but what I do know, Lon is going to show us how to make great chicken scarpariello. Yes, yes I am. This dish is awesome. It features really nicely browned chicken with sausage, peppers, and onions. And you can't go wrong you with really that. You really cannot go wrong. Chicken, sausage, peppers, onions, you had me there. Yeah, right? One of the other things I love about this dish is you don't dirty too many pans doing it. It all happens right here in this 12-inch skillet. Weeknight dream. Right. I've got a tablespoon of oil. I'm just going to crank it up to medium high. And while that oil heats up, let's prep the chicken. All right, the main ingredient. Yes. I've got three pounds of chicken parts here. You can buy them in pieces. You could break down a chicken if you'd like. The fat's been trimmed off. I've cleaned up the pieces a little bit. The last step is just to cut the breasts in half. That helps them cook through a little faster and everything finishes up at the same time. Great. I'm just going to cut through this skin. And when you get to the bone, um, instead of cutting down, I'm just gonna press. Just cracks right through. Yeah. That's great. We're using chicken with the skin on and the bone in. That's going to add a lot of flavor to this dish. After the pieces are cut in half, pat them dry. Getting rid of that water really speeds up browning, and we want the crisp skin mm. and the flavor. OK. A little bit of salt. If you don't mind, sure. would you pepper for me? You got it. All right, I'm the pepper lady. Yeah. Just bring me in. I'm just going to go wash my hands, and we'll start cooking. Sounds good. Now that that oil is smoking, let's get the chicken in the pan. All right. That's a good sound. Right. And Lon is cooking all the chicken in one batch here, so it's really important to get that pan and the oil superheated. If she were to not let the oil go up to the point where it starts to smoke, the pan would be too cold. All the chicken goes in, that oil temperature drops, and the chicken would steam rather than brown. I'm putting in the chicken skin side down. I want to make sure I get a good sear and help some of that fat render off. Okay. And I'm not going to touch these and just let them do their thing. It's going to take about five minutes on this side. We'll flip them over, give them another three to brown the second side. But in the meantime, we can go prep our peppers. All right, sounds good. I have one red bell pepper here, and I'm just going to take the bottom off and the top. But we're not throwing those away. We'll use them. And then open it up, run my knife along the ribs to remove them. Beautiful pinwheel action you yeah, have going on right? there. And then it's already nice and flat, and we'll just go and slice. Now, as for these tops and bottoms, I'm just going to run a knife through them. They're perfectly good. No reason to not use them. And then we move on to our pickled peppers. I'm using hot cherry peppers for that kick of heat. They're nice and briny and salty. And I'm just gonna cut the top off, scoop out the guts with a spoon, and then run a knife through. Now, this is one of five cherry peppers. It's going to yield about a half a cup once it's prepped. Bridget, this chicken looks great. Five minutes on that skin side gave it this gorgeous color and three minutes on the bottom, it's fantastic. I'm gonna get this out of the pan. All right. So that pan looks beautiful. That's lots of flavor in there. Right, so I have eight ounces of sweet Italian sausage with the casings removed, and I'm just gonna break it up into kind of bite-sized pieces after it is broken up. Just gonna leave it alone, let it brown, stir occasionally. So it's been about three minutes. This looks great. You can see a bunch of the fat has rendered out and the sausage is nicely browned. I'm just going to transfer this to a towel-lined plate to get rid of that extra fat. I'm just going to pour it out and reserve one tablespoon. So now that the sausage and chicken are done, let's get our vegetables into the skillet. I've got one onion sliced thin and that bell pepper we worked on earlier. Just going to stir it around as it cooks. And I'm just looking for the vegetables to pick up some color, soften a little bit. It's been about five minutes, and the onions are nice and wilted, as are the peppers. They're starting to color. It smells so unbelievable in here right now. Oh, we're not quite done yet. Let's get those cherry peppers in. This is five cloves of minced garlic. All right. And lastly, one teaspoon of dried oregano. Just going to give this a stir and make sure that 
the garlic is cooked out and those aromatics bloom a little bit, this will take about one minute. So now we're gonna begin building our sauce. This is one tablespoon of flour. I'm just gonna sprinkle it in. So it's not a super thick sauce, it's just enough to add a little bit of body. Right, this gives you a nice silky texture and it clings better to the chicken and the vegetables. I've got three quarters of a cup of chicken broth. All right. That's a good sound, deglazing the pan there. And two tablespoons of the brine from those pickled peppers. The little pickle brine. Yeah, it's fantastic. It is, it's sweet, salty, a little sour, a little bit spicy too. Yeah, it's perfect. As you can see, it's come up to a simmer. The sauce is starting to tighten up. Mm -hmm. and that's it, we're almost there. I'm going to turn this off and stir in that sausage. So now, the chicken goes right on. It's like the peppers and the sausage are acting as a rack holding the chicken above all the sauce. Yeah, the skin is staying well above mm -hmm. the liquid and it's going to stay crispy while the chicken finishes cooking. That's great. So this is going to finish in a 350 degree oven. I've got the rack in the middle position. It's gonna take 20, 25 minutes. Okay, great. Doesn't that smell great? It smells amazing. So it's been about 20 minutes. Really? And I'm just going to check the temperature and I'm looking for the breasts to register about 160 degrees. There we go. Perfect. All right. And the dark meat, the thighs and the drums, we're looking for 175. These look great. One last bit, I've got a little bit of chopped parsley. It's about a tablespoon. Beautiful. It just adds a little freshness to this and some color. Now it looks Italian. Right, we've got the <laughs> colors. You ready to try this? I sure am. Here is a little bit of the dark meat, a mm. little bit of the white meat, and the vegetables and sausage. All right. Yeah, you're right, the skin is yeah. still nice and crisp. And the breast meat is still really juicy, really tender. Yes, I would say that looks juicy and very tender. Right. Mm. Got the sweet flavor coming through with the bell peppers. Got a little kick coming behind it with that briny cherry pepper. And that sauce, it's nice and silky. It's not running all over the place. It's not broken. It's fantastic. Thank you, Lon, so much. This is spectacular. Well, it's easy to cobble together dinner if you have the right ingredients, and it's just that simple for chicken scarpariello. Start with browning the chicken, then sausage right in that chicken fat, followed by onions, red peppers, cherry peppers, and a little oregano. Toast flour in the pan, then deglaze with broth and cherry pepper brine. Put the meat back in the pan and into the oven it goes until it's all cooked through. So from Cook's Country, a shoo-in for dinner. It's our fantastic full-flavored chicken scarpariello. And you can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and select episodes on our website, cookscountry.com. Thanks for watching Cook's Country from America's Test Kitchen. So what'd you think? Leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or just say hi. Now you can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. Alligator. <laughs>